So one of the most popular videos I did was the Keynote Masterclass. And do you remember this part whenever we were working on that interactive sort of animated chart? And one of the tips that and tricks that I showed you is how I use transparent images as masks. Well, a lot of you have reached out and you said, Steve, that's fantastic, that's great. You didn't show us how to do it. So that's what I wanna to do today is I just wanna really quickly show you and walk you through start to finish, how do you make those transparent objects inside a Keynote? Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Crazy One. As always, I'm your host, Steve Gates, and this is the YouTube channel and podcast that teaches you how to be more creative, how to be a better leader, and today, some really cool tips and tricks for applications like Photoshop. Now, if you like these videos and you wanna be able to get more of them, then do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell, because that way, whenever I put out a new video, you're gonna be able to find out about it. Now, today, that's what we wanna do, is we wanna talk about this killer little trick that I use to use transparent objects as a mask. You can use it for animation, you can use it for all sorts of things inside a Keynote, but we're gonna do it using Keynote and using Photoshop. Now don't worry, you can do this in any imaging software. So if you don't have Photoshop, don't worry, it's not gonna be a big issue. We're gonna make the image in Keynote, export it out, pull it into Photoshop, make it transparent, and then bring it back in so that we can use it. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be simple and powerful, and this is gonna be one of those things that you're really gonna want in your arsenal. Okay, well once again, here we are back in Keynote. And this was that chart. And if you haven't watched the advanced animation masterclass that I did, the link is down in the description. You can hit that and be able to watch that whole thing. But this was that moment that everybody saw, was whenever I sort of revealed that for this chart and for this animation, I have this transparent piece that's on top. And what that allows me to do is that whenever this chart actually builds in, you can see right here in this area, they sort of appear right there. So that whenever they animate up, I'm using that as a mask, simple enough. Okay, but let's actually start all the way from the beginning. So let's close that. And again, just we're here in Keynote, create a new document, we'll just pick basic white theme. So be able to get in, get this started. Now then what I want to be able to do here is that let's get rid of all of this. Okay. Now what I want to be able to do is to have there were five columns there. So to be able to make those columns, we need two parts. There's gonna be the square part, that is the middle. Slide it down so you see that little yellow line to know it's in the middle. And then there's a circle that goes at the top. So we can drag that out. So again, you see those little yellow arrows right there, know it's the same width. Drag it up, hold down Option to be able to do that. Okay, so now, great. Now we have one of these and now we need five. So what I can do is just Option, drag those, Let's grab two of them, do that again, and then let's grab one last one and drag that over. Okay, so now I've got five. Well, now what I wanna be able to do is just to simply, let's go through and group each one of these just so they're a little bit easier to work with. So group, fourth one, group, fifth one, group. All right, now let's probably want those a little bit spaced apart a little bit more. So we'll do all of those, arrange, distribute objects horizontally, recenter everything. Okay, perfect. So this is all that I'm really gonna need out of Keynote is to be able to have this basic template. So now we wanna go in and under this, I wanna be able to go in here and do export to and be able to do images. Okay. Now, whenever I do this, I normally whenever you do this, you don't want to do all because if you have a deck that has a bunch of different images in here, all creates a mess. So usually just get in the habit of doing from because if I just want to export one of them, from will be able to let you do that. But in this case, what I want to do is just export from the one to one, make sure it's on the highest quality you can have because again, you don't want it to be all crunchy because whenever you go in and do it, that's going to create a problem. Next. Let's save it to the desktop. We will just call it, uh, let's call it template. That sounds easy enough. And hit export. Okay, so now whenever we go down, close this out, you'll see that over here, great, there's a template folder. So whenever I open that up, ta-da, there is now the template image inside. Now, what we wanna do is then drag that into your favorite image editing program. For me, for this one, we'll drag it into Photoshop. Now there's a few things that you're gonna to need to be able to do to create that transparency. The first thing is, as we look over here, you're gonna be able to see where it says background and this little lock. 
this lock makes all the difference in whether or not you're going to be able to make something transparent or not. Because right now, if I go in, I pick the magic wand, I try to select it, and I hit delete, well, it's going to ask me to put a color in there. And that's not what I want. I want it to be transparent. And if you work in Photoshop, you know that anything is transparent will show you that sort of like gray checkerboard that that's what it means when it's transparent. So that's not going to get this. I don't understand why they do it, but if you just simply double click on the layer, have the layer come up and hit OK, now you see that little lock is gone. So now it's actually made it into a separate layer that is unlocked. So now if I, again, have this selected, and if you can sort of see in there, you see where there's that little sort of dotted line around it, that means it's selected. Now if I hit the delete key, there's that checkerboard that we've been looking for. So this is what it is that I want. So now what I wanna do is just kind of go in, quickly select all of those, hit the delete key. Okay, great, now I have this whole thing where it is transparent, and again, I can get in, and if I move this around, you can see that it's transparent, cool. Now, what I wanna do with this is there's two different ways that I can get this back into Keynote. The simplest way that I know is just to do select all, do copy, reopen Keynote, so now let's actually put another slide in here. Just, you know, and we can just do that just because, again, I think it's going to be a little bit easier just so that we have that ability to be able to go in and just sort of show you that it's different. So, again, clean out all of that. Let's change the background color to purple. Now, all I need to do here is just do paste. And whenever I do that, ta-da, this comes in. And you can see because of the background color, it actually will hold the transparency in your clipboard. That's the easiest way that I know it and the fastest way to be able to do it. But maybe you need to share it with other people. Maybe you want to be able to do something else with it. So again, the other thing that you can do here is to do file. And again, there are other ways to be able to do this. For me, like if you just go in this save for web, I know it's a legacy sort of format, but it's the easiest way where I can show you this is that because JPEGs in here, see all this? JPEGs don't understand transparency. If I change the file format to this PNG8, that starts to understand transparency, but it gets a little funky and jaggedy around the edge. So for this one, go a little bit crazy, do PNG 24. So now again, we see the checkerboard again. Now we can export it and be able to make it transparent. So save it. Let's put it back in that template folder. We'll just call it template one PNG. I can save that. Okay, great. We're done with this. No need to save it. Great. Now let's go back once again in here, go back to Keynote. So let's do the same thing again. So make a new slide, get rid of that stuff. And now different background color, we'll make this one yellow. And now here again, there's, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. The easiest way for me, most of the time is again, you can import it, do things like that, but why not just grab it, drag it, drop it, bang, it comes in, it's centered. And there again, we have that. So like I said, you can do it this way, which is to be able to copy to, the, to your clipboard and be able to paste it in or save it as a file and just drag it in. Now, what you can see is what we were talking about before, where this is a mask. So if I do this, okay, well, it doesn't look like a mask because this object is now sitting in front of the mask. So arrange, send it backwards, ta-da. Now you see, as we move this around, that we can see that that's masking out that object. And that was how we built that whole object for the chart. But again, you can use this for a lot of things and it's just any place you want to obscure it. In this case, whenever you do it and it's white, it just looks like everything else, but it's simply just that simple. You can build it just like this in Keynote, export it into Photoshop, knock out those shapes, and either do it through your clipboard, save it as a PNG, pull it back in, you're good to go. Well, I told you, it's just that fast and just that easy. But I think it's just one of those things whenever you have it, you can start to use it a lot of different places. You can make things look a lot more sophisticated, and just like whenever I did that original tutorial, nobody's ever gonna know how you did it. So like I said, Hopefully this was something that you liked. If you want to be able to get more of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get new videos whenever those come out. You can always check out the podcast. Head over to thecrazyone.com. I've got over 100 episodes dealing with all sorts of things around creativity, leadership, design, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you soon. And as always, stay crazy.